signal xt is equal to ut square plus 3t plus 2 and we are required to calculate its Fourier transform x omega and you can see signal xt is not expressed in terms of any standard signal which we have studied till now. So our first task is to represent or express signal xt in terms of some standard signal and from there on we can easily calculate the Fourier transform x omega. So let's move to the solution of the question. To express signal xt in terms of some standard signal I will take t square plus 3t plus 2 t square plus 3t plus 2 and I will break this 3t in two terms t plus 2t so we have t square plus 3t plus 2 equal to t square plus t plus 2t plus 2 in the first two terms we are having t as common so let's take it out so we are left with t plus 1 and in the last two terms we are having 2 common so let's take it out we are having t plus 1 in the bracket after this we can take t plus 1 common so finally we are having t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2 so t square plus 3t plus 2 can be written as t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2 so signal xt is equal to u t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2. Now we will put t equal to minus 3, t equal to minus 1.5 and t equal to 1.5. We are doing this to get some idea about the signal waveform. Let's put t equal to minus 3. In this scenario we will have x minus 3 it will be equal to u minus 3 plus 1 multiplied to minus 3 plus 2 when you solve it you will get u inside the bracket 2 so here we are having t equal to plus 2 so t is positive and we know for positive values of time t ut is equal to plus 1 so x minus 3 is equal to plus 1 because unit step signal is equal to 1 for positive values of time t. Now we will calculate ut when t is equal to minus 1.5. This will give us x minus 1.5. It is equal to u inside the bracket minus 1.5 plus 1 multiplied to minus 1.5 plus 2. When you solve it, you will get u minus 0 0.25. So here t is negative. And we know for negative values of time t, unit step signal is equal to 0. So x minus 1.5 is equal to 0. In the same way, when you calculate xt when t is equal to 1.5, you will get x 1.5 equal to plus 1. So from here we are getting some very important information about our waveform. You can see xt is equal to 1 then it becomes 0 and then it becomes 1. So we are having the waveform like this. Let's say here we are having t equal to minus 3. Here we are having t equal to minus 1.5 and here we are having t equal to 1.5. The important thing is calculation of these two time instants. These two time instants are the instants at which the abrupt changes are happening in the signal waveform. Here signal waveform was having the value equal to 1 and at this time instant it became 0 and at this time instant value is becoming 1 from 0. So we will calculate t1 and t2 and for this purpose we will equate t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2 with 0. So let's equate t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2 with 0 and this will give us two values of time t minus 1 and minus 2. 
So this instant of time is minus 2, this instant of time is minus 1. So at minus 1 and minus 2 abrupt changes are happening in the signal waveform and in this way we have obtained our waveform of signal xt. You can see the waveform, it will look like this at minus 2 and minus 1 abrupt changes are happening in the signal waveform. Now we can break this signal into two different signal waveforms. This is the first signal waveform. Let's call it X1T and this is the second signal waveform. Let's call it X2T. When you add X1T and X2T you will get XT. So XT is equal to X1T plus X2T and let's say the Fourier transform of x1 t is equal to x1 omega and the Fourier transform of x2 t is equal to x2 omega and from linearity property from linearity property Fourier transform x omega which is the Fourier transform of xt will be equal to x1 omega plus x2 omega so if we can calculate x1 omega and x2 omega, we can have x omega. So now we will focus on the calculation of x1 omega and x2 omega. But first, I will give you the proper sequence of all these steps. Factorizing t square plus 3t plus 2 is step number 1. Then equating t plus 1 multiplied to t plus 2 with 0 is step number two and then calculating the signal values for different instants of time is a step number three we cannot have these values of time t until we complete step number two because you can see t equal to minus three is the value or instant of time which is less than minus two t equal to minus 1.5 is the instant of time between minus 1 and minus 2 and t equal to 1.5 is the instant of time greater than minus 1. So in this way we have to follow step number 1, step number 2 and step number 3 and once we have the waveform of the signal we will calculate the Fourier transform like we are calculating till now. In this presentation I switched step number three and step number two just to explain you the method in a better way. So let's move to the calculation of Fourier transform x1 omega and for this we will first find out signal x1t. It is clear that signal x1t will be obtained after performing the time reversal of a unit step signal and then shifting the waveform towards the left by two units. So we will separate t and then shift it towards the left by two units. This will give us u minus t minus 2. And we know ut is having the Fourier transform equal to 1 over j omega plus pi delta omega. So u minus t will have the Fourier transform equal to minus 1 over j omega. In place of omega we will have minus omega plus pi delta minus omega. Delta omega is an even signal therefore delta minus omega is same as delta omega. So we will write delta omega in place of delta minus omega. Now we will calculate the Fourier transform of u minus t plus 2 which is u minus t minus 2. We will use the time shifting property. Fourier transform of u minus t is equal to minus 1 over j omega plus pi delta omega and from time shifting property we have e power plus j omega 2 multiplied to Fourier transform of u minus t. So in this way we have obtained the Fourier transform x1 omega and calculation of Fourier transform 
x to omega is homework for you and once you have x to omega add it with x1 omega and you will have the Fourier transform x omega. This method is very important because if this question comes in exam not many students will be able to solve it. So this is all see you in the next one.